Hey guys, welcome to Bambi TV. Guys, today we're going to be checking out Jordan Peterson leaves agnostic speechless on Jesus Christ. Guys, let's check this out together, guys. And he's someone I actually love and respect. So, so there's a there's a scene in the Gospels where, you know, the Pharisees and the uh, scribes. So they're the woke bureaucrats, really, <laughs> in many ways. They're trying to trap Christ all the time because they think he's dangerous and they'd like to nail him for heresy. And so they get a lawyer to come up to him and say, uh, Master, which you, 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 you say you abide by the commandments. Uh, which of them is the greatest? And here's the trick. The trick is, well, no matter what Christ says, they're gonna nail him because if he makes any one commandment superordinate to the others, then he denigrates the others and they can go after him on that front. So they really put him on the spot. And he says something that refers back to this principle of Mount Sinai, this idea of a horizontal and a vertical axis, right? And he says, um, you should love God with all, your, with all your heart and with all your mind, and you should love other people as you love yourself. And so, and then he says, and those, that's the meta principle upon which all the commandments rest. And so it's an amazing sleight of hand, eh, because he answers the question, but he doesn't allow himself to be trapped. And what he says is, and this is akin to what you just laid out. You said, well, I don't need faith in a religious structure because I can abide by these principles. And so we can think of the principles as your version of the 10 commandments. Mm -hmm. Maybe there's 20 of them. I don't know how many there are, but, and they're derived from your own experience. And I think, and the experience of your family. But then you might think, Let's assume for a moment that all those principles are good. And so we're assuming that there's a commonality across the principles and that commonality is that which I, allows them to be categorized as good. Okay. And then the question would be, well, what's the underlying meta principle that unites them as good? And that's exactly the question that Christ is trying to answer. So he says, well, you wanna be oriented towards the highest good conceivable, you wanna be open to that. And so that would be something like making the decision in your life that you were going to strive towards whatever was good, whatever that is, right? Just, just to make that the initial proposition. And then you were gonna treat other people as if they were as valuable as you are and vice versa. And that that's the underlying two dimensional, two dimensions of the principle that gives rise to, let's say all necessary commandments. And then I would say that the spirit that puts God above all else, puts the divine above all else, and that unites us with other people, that is what the monotheistic tendency tilts towards portraying psychologically. It's an attempt to flesh out what that is. That's how it looks to me. Fair enough. So, you know, like, it, are you, the question is, I think, Constantine, the question is pretty simple. If your principles are coherent, then there's a meta principle that unites them. And then the fundamental religious question would be, well, what is that meta principle and how do you, how, how do you conduct yourself in relationship to it? Let's assume for a moment that the voice of intuition that speaks to you has a moral element. And the moral element is that it's gonna shape your perceptions and your behaviors. Now you could say that's idi idiosyncratic right? That it's only unique to you. And some of that's going to be true because that's true insofar as you're really creative, let's say, or even revolutionary. But here, here's the rub as far as I can tell. Okay, so there's this idea that emerges in Exodus that the well-constituted polity has to have two dimensions. There has to be a vertical dimension that unites it with the transcendent. So that would be like the king's fealty to to, to God, mm. the, the idea that the king himself is sub, subordinate to a set of transcendent principles, yeah. and so is everyone else. So that's the vertical axis, and that would be that feeling of universality that you described, like sort of descending upon you. Mm. But then there's a horizontal axis, and the horizontal axis is something like, well, I have to conduct myself so that I can engage in repeated acts of reciprocal altruism with other people. Yes. Okay, now you need both of those because sometimes 
You know, you might say, well, you should get along to go along, or you should go along to get along. You should conduct yourself the way other people want you to conduct yourself. And that's usually true, except when everyone goes crazy. Right. And then you might say, well, what do you need to bind you when everyone goes crazy? And the answer is, well, you need that relationship with the vertical. And so, except the, the people central... who run the structure that connects people to the vertical often go crazy too. I, I, I absolutely, that's a big problem. But that's why, it, that's why it's a mistake to construe the religious enterprise as something that's only a consequence of tradition. Like, look in the Jewish writings, you've got two sources of the religious enterprise. You've got the, you've got the tradition, and that goes corrupt. Let's say in the form of a corrupt king. But then you have the prophets. And the prophets are those who stand up and say to the corrupt king, you know, there's a divine order against which you're transgressing, and if you don't get your act together, all hell's going to break loose even though you're king. Now, your question might be, well, how do we tell the false prophets from the true prophets? And that's, well, and the answer to that is, by their fruits you will know them. That's one answer to that. But, but it does reflect this underlying problem. But you've already said in yourself, you know, you. You, you're leery to accept divine revelation in the form of a handed down tradition, mm. right? And that does make you a Protestant in the most fundamental sense. But you also do note that you have access to something like into like the pool of intuition, let's put it that way, that can tap you right. I would say that to the degree that that intuition is a reliable source, it's also going to be structured so that it facilitates your ongoing interactions with other people in the best possible manner. So it's not purely idiosyncratic, right? It, it's again, it's subject to its own logos, its own internal logic. If, if the, it may be upon occasion that that internal voice will do what Socrates did, Socrates' voice, which is to say, you have to off, offer yourself up as sacrificial victim to the mob. Uh -huh. Right, and God help us from that eventuality. But that may happen upon occasion, but it's still the case that if that voice of intuition is deep when it rises within you, it's going to rise up within you in a manner that facilitates your integration with the social community and the social community's improvement. At least you better hope that that's the case. Right. Guys, yeah, this was amazing, guys. See, that's why I said I love Jordan Peterson. Because I feel he's one that speaks out of known research and knowledge. That I like the way he kind of quoted some Bible verse. <laughs> she just put it in. The one thing about the Bible that I can say is that most books I've read, not most, but some books I've read have actually, like, the Bible always comes out. Like, they bring us facts from the bible every time guys and the bible is an amazing book guys it's little but amazing like there are a lot of things a lot of wisdom that like, it talks about every single thing the bible talks about every single thing and if you follow the bible guys you're gonna have an amazing life let's forget about the religious part like follow the bible as a book and just follow the words that are there like, love your neighbor by yourself. Like, give to God what belongs to God and give to Caesar what belongs to Caesar. Like, if you listen to it, like, if you read it, you don't really have to believe in it because when you read it, you just believe in it. Like, it pushes you to live in that good life. And I love what Peter, Jordan Peterson said, guy. Like, he's kind of person that actually explain it further. Like, the way Jesus actually answers and such the Pharisees like he said worship the Lord your God and cheat and evil as yourself because that that is it. like I feel that's the foundation so to worship God and love your evil like treat them the way you want to be treated and if we all treat people the way we want to be treated guys I feel we're going to move ahead like if everyone treats someone with respect and love and kindness like I feel we're going to we're going to shift, like, we're going to move forward, we're going to go to the next level, because it will be an amazing thing to do, right, like, you know, wanting something because you give someone help, but it's going to spoil the marketplace, but it's going to still be amazing, guys, don't forget to like, share, subscribe to my channel, 
Así, necesitamos un espacio.